seek him, he will be found. Uh, amen and glory to God. I want to turn your attention this evening to the book of Exodus chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. Exodus chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. I believe I come to you with a message from heaven tonight. This message ain't going to make you shout. <laughs> this message may not make you happy. But it's a message I believe God would have me to delay here. Because people don't realize they're standing on holy ground. Amen. This is not an entertainment center. This is not your house. This is where we meet God at. Amen. Amen. I'm going to show you. Some people say this is just a building. If you was here this morning, I remind you where Mo Moses stood was just a piece of dirt in front of a bush. But God said it was holy ground. And the reason it was holy ground, it wasn't because of the dirt. It wasn't because of the bush. It's because of whose presence was residing there. Amen. Too often we treat the house of God like our own. Too often we walk in here without fear or reverence with the things of God. And I've come by to tell you it's time for the people of God. Some may have not known it. Some may do it uh, things out of ignorance. And some do it just out of disrespect. But this is God's property. Your temple, your body is the temple of God. Tonight, you'll see where I'm going. I'm not, I'm not hard, but I'm delivering you a message from God. Start fearing Him, and you will see His presence reside in your life. Amen? Exodus 3 right here. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And then the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, while the bush is not hit burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from the, off thy feet. feet. For this place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the Lord God of the Father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. But the heart of my message goes back to verse 5 right there, where the Lord spoke these words, and he said, Draw nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Heavenly Father, we come before you, dear Lord, tonight, Lord. We ask for your anointing and we ask for your spirit to anoint me to speak your word that you have given me. Father, tonight I ask for you to let this word sink into each one of us. I ask you, Lord, to give me the words you would have me to speak in here tonight. Let your words flow. Let your anointing flow. Let, your light, let you touch, dear God, tonight. Lord, that you move mightily, dear God, that we get respect and hunger and fear and reverence for your presence, for who you are. Lord, tonight we get in our minds that you're not just a mere man. But you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That you're the God. That you're the eternal one. The great I am. Father, tonight we just give you glory, dear God. Praise and honor in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. There is something that is missing in the body of Christ these days. 
There is some things that are missing among those that are claimed to be born again. There are some three, th a couple of things I want to tell you what is missing. The first one is reverence, a reverence for God. The second one is a fear, and it ties into a reverence. So I'm talking about a good type of fear. I've preached the last few weeks on a couple of sermons on the bad types of fear. But there's a good type of fear, and that is the fear of God. There is also respect that is missing in the body of Christ. Respect for the things of God. Respect for the house of God. Respect for the ones who brings the word. And there's also lacking is an act of obedience towards God. Tonight I want to tell you that if we're going to see a move of God... Can I tell you tonight that we've got to get these words that I spoke back into the body of Christ. This is a generation that flat out disrespects God. This is a generation that don't realize the holiness of God. Many times when I talk about that, I talk about people's actions I talk about people's attitudes, and yes, I'm going to talk about people's dress because I can back it up in the Word of God. And no, I'm not being legalistic, but I'm telling you the Bible teaches us tonight that we are to dress modesty before the Lord this evening. And then they are those who treat the house of God as a so, as a movie house. They treat the house of God as their own house to come in and kick up and prop up any old way they want to prop up. They want to have it their way. And the lists can go on and on and on tonight. But I've come by to tell you that this house is not your house. I've come by to tell you that this house is where the presence of God comes in. This is the place that we can meet the very presence of the Lord God Jehovah. This is holy ground tonight. This is more than just a building. This is more than just a place that we just come together. This is a place that we can find the very presence of the Lord God Jehovah this evening. And I've come by to tell you tonight it's time we begin to reverence and it's time that we begin to respect and it's time for the body of Christ to get the fear of God back into their life because I'm telling you what it is missing in these days compared to yesterday is a fear of God is a reverence of God is a respect of God. You see, they were many years ago in the early histories of the Pentecostal church. Many times they would go beyond, they would do things that the, they would go, they would go to people would say that well the scripture don't forbid it you're going too far well let me tell you something about the early days the reason some of those people didn't do the things that they did is because they had a fear they had a reverence to the Lord God Jehovah and it was in those days also that I remind you that they when the power of God the presence of God would be made manifest inside of our sanctuaries. It was in those days that you could see the power of God and his very, feel his very presence come into the midst. And I'm telling you, it was in those days you could bring the sick up and there wouldn't be one left that would not be healed. Can I tell you tonight, I come for, look for the days where God's people will get back to that point where they have a fear of God in their lives where they'll have a reverence for the things of God where they will respect 
the house of God. Can I tell you this evening, it's time for the church of God and it's time for the very body of Christ to realize that we didn't come in here to have a meal. We didn't come in here to drink soft drinks or eat cookies. We came in here to get the bread of life. And now I'm going to ask you nicely. I've said, listen, I'm asking the only thing I want brought into this sanctuary is water. Did you hear me? If you need your drinks, take it downstairs or leave it out into the car. Folks, we got to get back to fearing God. I ask you, it's don't come in here to balance your checkbook. Don't come in here to get on Facebook. Don't come in here to just be playing around. But we need to come in here in praise and adoration. We need to come in here walking into fear and the reverence of the Lord God Jehovah this evening. And I tell you tonight, when we get the fear of God, when we get the reverence of God, can I tell you I am convinced when the church gets back to respecting and fearing God, we will experience, we will have an outpouring of old time Pentecost like they did on that day in Acts 2 when we come to church looking to pray and worship more than mingle and talk when we come into his house with praise and adoration in our heart instead of complaining and grumble can I tell you when we come in here to come into the very presence of God this evening can I tell you tonight when we get to the point that we want to come into this point and realize this is holy ground we will see a move of God did you hear me when I got this message together I could hear the Holy Spirit saying if they respect me if my people will fear me I will come into their midst I will do great things I will heal the sick I will save the lost I will draw them in listen here tonight church of God if we're going to see the miraculous we've got to get back to reverence in God we got to get back to understand that the reason I come through those doors is not to see the man behind the pulpit the reason I come through the doors is not to hear the great singing that we have the reason I come through the doors where I can get into the very presence of the Lord God Jehovah I didn't come in here to be entertained I didn't come in here to do this and that I came to serve the Lord I came to worship God I come to stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords can I tell you tonight the Bible tells us to work out our own salvation but it says with fear and trembling amen amen I'm telling you it is a shame in many cases that people don't fear God they don't realize the ground that we're standing on his holy ground the ground when we walk through we're not walking through to see a man we're walking through to get into the presence of God this evening you see the first admiration that was given to Moses by God was to be aware of the holiness of God hello God told him he was holy Moses was to be aware of the holiness of God. You see here in Exodus chapter 3, we are being, Moses was being commissioned by God. He was to go to be Israel's deliverer. And it begins by the burning bush. This is where God reminds Moses that he is holy. Why, because he, his, why was that place holy? Because of God's presence. Too often, too often, we take the presence of God so lightly. Too often, we just treat it nonchalant. But can I tell you that when we come into the presence of God, it ought to be special before us. When we come into the presence of God, we 
we ought to cherish the presence of God. When we come before the presence of God, we ought to be thankful that we can come and stand before God, that we can come into a sanctuary where we know He comes into. We need to be thankful to know that that we can gather together and pray and touch God, that we can feel the power of God. We ought to be thankful that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are still moving in our sanctuaries this evening. Folks, I'm telling you tonight, don't you take the presence of God lightly. Don't you just treat it like nonchalant because if you can, people treat the presence of God like, like take it lightly, one day the presence of God is going to depart and write Ichabod on the door. Can I tell you this evening, the strength of the church is the power and the presence of God. It is the spirit. How many remember the story of Samson? How many know he had a great, he was a man of great strength? How many know he was a Nazareth? That Nazarene, I want you to know this evening that Samson's strength didn't come from his hair. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Samson's strength actually came from the spirit of God. And Samson, we know the story of him. He just assumed one day that the power, the spirit of God would go out and he would be on him and he went out and whisked himself and can I tell you this evening can I tell you this evening that when when he whisked the spirit of God had departed and when the spirit of God had departed his strength was gone my Lord if there's been a time can I preach a little while tonight can I preach a little while this evening I'm going to jump everything up here in a minute can I tell you if there's ever been a time where we need the power of God and the presence of God and the church needs to come into power it is right now if you ain't seen what is happening in our nation we've got open homosexuals that have been elected to high offices in this land there was one woman in Minnesota said for those who don't like openly gay people doing this and against us look at what me and my wife were doing and they kissed right there it would turn your stomach not only that that in Minnesota they've elected a Muslim congressman or woman or something a woman that married her own brother to get a United States citizenship can I tell you the list can go on and on the spirit of perversion is wrapping up there's mass shootings every day sin is abound and I'm telling you the only answer for this society is the church to be in the presence of the Lord God Jehovah. The only answer is to have the strength of God, the power of God in our sanctuaries again among the body of Christ. But in order to have him, we've got to get back to fear and respect and reverence in the Holy One. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you this evening. If we're going to see a move of God, we don't need to trade his presence like that. We don't need to take it casually, and we don't need to be flat out disrespecting it. Think about it. What does the Scripture tell us? The Scripture tells us plainly that God is holy. Amen. First Peter 1 and 16, Be ye holy. For I am holy. Hebrews 12 and 14. Follow peace and and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Ephesians 1 and 4. That we should be holy and without blame. One must remember. Our bodies are also the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. See right here, I want you to be aware of the holiness of God tonight. I want you to be aware of how holy God is. I ain't even got started yet. This may be an all-nighter tonight. Amen. 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 Listen, today I want you to know this ground around here is holy ground. 
Did you hear me? I want you to know this sanctuary is holy. Amen. I don't want to see preachers get on stage in flip-flops. Hello. Did you hear me? You better, I had a pastor, if your shoe was a little bit dirty, he wouldn't let you preach that night. He said, if you're too lazy to wipe your shoe off, you're too lazy to preach. Amen. Amen. I know he held up to that rule on some. One got up there in flip-flops and he wouldn't let him preach. Amen. What I'm telling you, we forget the very presence of God. We forget that when we come in here, this is sacred. This is holy because of the presence of the Lord God, Jehovah. It's not because of this building. Because It's because of the abiding presence of the Lord. I want you to remember again that where Moses stood before that burning bu that bush, remember before God was there in that bush, it was dirt and it was a piece of bush just there. But the very moment God's presence was residing in that bush, that piece of ground became holy ground. Did you hear what I'm telling you? What are you meaning by this preacher? What is your message about this? It's a simply a message about respecting God. It is simply a message to get back to the standards of God's Word. It is a message that we ought to walk fearfully and we ought to walk uprightly before God today. It's a message to remember uh, the holiness of God uh, is still his standard. Uh, it is a message tonight uh, that we ought to give on our best uh, when we stand before God. Uh, it is a message tonight uh, to remind you you didn't come in here to get entertained. Uh, you didn't come in here to get sugar. Uh, you came in here to get bread and water. Uh, it is a message tonight uh, that you came in here uh, to come and for the presence of God my Lord I don't know about you but I can't think of nothing better than to come before the presence of the Lord God Jehovah can I tell you church let's remember who God is let's remember his standards let's remember that God is holy and righteous amen I think about it Oh, let me tell you, people say holiness. Can I tell you, holiness is still God's standard. You holy people, holiness is holiness. I heard one time somebody said, well, holiness is on the inside of you. That is true. Holiness is on the inside. But can I tell you what's on the inside will reflect on what's on the outside. What's in you will come out of you. How many remember the words of Jesus? Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaketh. Amen? What he was saying, what's in your heart is what's going to come out of you. And if you're living upright before God, it's going to reflect out of you. If you're living right before God, it's going to show. If you're living holy before God, people are going to take notice there's something different about this one. You see why I'm here in Houston town? Why God has me here? I want this community to know there's something different about the Houston town church of God. I want them to know that we're different than the rest. I want them to know that we're totally different. That we still believe in the standard of holiness in this last day. What are you talking about preacher? I'm talking about what one wears is a reflection of what one really is. Hello, I'm going to preach for a few minutes. Hello. Hello, I'm going to turn this air conditioning up a little bit. Hello, I'm going to preach right now. You see people say, oh, it ain't about what you wear. It ain't about how you dress. Well, let me tell you something. I'm talking to saints of God tonight. I'm not talking to those that are in the world. I'm talking to those who know better. Can I tell you the Bible tells us we ought to present our best before God. I'm talking about the Bible tells us we ought to dress modesty before God. The Bible tells us, we listen, that we are what we are a reflection of him. 
we don't walk around half naked. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, let me tell all of you something. Uh, I'm not going to deal with the, well, I'll use the ladies real quick. I may get stoned here in a little bit, but as long as I'm in the pulpit, I think I'll be all right. Uh, did you hear what I'm telling you? You see, let me tell you, you don't walk through these doors uh, dressed half naked. Uh, did you hear what I'm telling you tonight? Uh, oh, I'll back this up with scripture. You don't walk through these doors trying to advertise yourself. Did you hear me? And try to pick up. <laughs> I better not go there. You hear what I'm saying tonight? You hear what I'm telling you this evening? Can I tell you, men, we ought to dress holy before God also. Preacher, you're wrong about how we dress. Oh, really? Can I tell you what Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 2 and 9? In like manner, also that women adorn themselves in modest appeal right there. There you go. Modesty. Modesty right there. With shamefulness and sobriety. Not broaded hair or gold or curls of costly array. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works. What he was saying there is you, your, the godliness in your life ought to be your beauty. Amen. Now he wasn't forbidding a woman wearing a necklace or something. Now he was, you know, he didn't, he, he wasn't intended you to go overboard. He wasn't saying don't wear a little makeup. Well, if the barn needs <laughs> painting, like I heard one picture. Well, you know what to do. <laughs> Did I just say that? <laughs> I just. <laughs> God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hear it all that. At the morning, fainting. Well, you know what to do, don't you? No, no. He didn't. wasn't talking about that. What he was talking about is dressing modest, being dressing righteously. What he was talking about, these things like that. And I'm not gonna just deal with that, also, because I'm gonna tell you. Paul dealt with modesty. But let me tell you something else he dealt with, we need to talk about. We need to talk about our attitude. We need to talk about the attitude that we have towards the things of God. We need to talk about nonchalant attitudes towards the house of God. We need to talk about attitudes around the things of God. Did you hear me? Because people's got a bad attitude towards the things of God. Amen. Hello, I'm just not going to deal with one thing. I'm going to get everybody somewhere tonight, one way or the other. Hello, I've come to deliver a message. Our attitudes towards God, our attitudes towards His thing. You know what? They treat His house like not second thing. Hey, Amen. They don't care about coming to the house of God, they don't care about supporting the things of God. If God don't, things of God never get supported, people don't really care. And let me tell you what the problem is. They got a bad attitude towards the house of God. In Haggai chapter 1 verse 1, God said, You built your house and laid my house in waste. And because of that, they cut hole, he cut holes in their pockets. And he, he stayed the rain that was over them. I'm telling you tonight, too many people's got a bad attitude towards the things of God. And let me tell you, when your right heart is right with God, can I tell you, you ain't going to have a bad attitude towards the things of God. Did you hear me? When you don't have a bad attitude, can I tell you, listen, when you are right with God, you're going to be saying it was time and it was glad to go into the house of God. Oh, that preacher's preaching too long. Well, when you get the right attitude, you'll say, go all night long. Did you hear me? When you get the right attitude, you'll say, here I am, Lord. Send me. When you get the right attitude, you'll say, like Paul said, what will thou have me to do? Can I tell you tonight? Can I tell you when we begin to respect God in our attitude, in our actions, in our words, in our deeds tonight? Amen. Amen. Anybody ready to stone me yet? Put your hand up. Amen. <laughs> Not yet. Maybe before. We need to watch our language. Amen. Hello. 
when I, when I got saved, that's one of the, I know people sometimes they struggle. But God took that away from me. Because before, you, before I was saved, I had a sailor's mouth. Amen. I'll tell you, before I was saved, the cowboys would have heard it. Especially if they lose the night. Now I'm praying, God help them any way you can. Listen, we need to watch these things. We need to watch what we say. We need to walk truthfully. Before God. It's a shame that some Christians believe they can tell a little white lie and everything's going to be all right. Let me tell you, God knows the truth. Amen? Amen? Oh, it's just a little white lie. A little lie uh, living the whole lump. Amen? It will cost you anything. Amen? Listen, people's attitudes, actions ought to be in line with the things of God. Hello, I'm not here to beat you down. I'm here to tell you that God wants to send revival. I'm here to tell you God wants to move in your life. I'm telling you we got to get the house of God in order for God to move. Did you hear me? Amen. Amen. How many know judgment begins in the house of God? How many know the scripture tells us judgment begins in the house of God? Let me tell you, don't you point to your brother. I'm the, uh, uh-uh. Don't you be, it'd be like me going to mama right here. Let me use her. I'm preaching to you tonight. He's preaching to you tonight. It'd be like you looking at Norma Jean said, he's talking to you tonight. Hey Amen. It'd be like, oh, y'all looking at your neighbor. Said, he's talking to you tonight. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. No, you need to go look in the mirror and say, he's talking to me tonight. Hey Amen. He's talking to me tonight. Somewhere along the way. Maybe I have lost some things. I ain't doing the things like I need to be doing. Maybe I'm not as hungry for God. Maybe I'm not as respectful and fearful for God like I once was. But can I tell you tonight, God's saying, come back to me. Get get your shoes off. Show me your respect. Can I tell you? God's saying, respect me. Desire me. And he says, I will send revival. But in order for God, God to begin to move in his house and I'm getting ready to prove this in a minute the house of God has to be in order amen amen how many want God to move in their life amen I'm going to tell you something tonight sometimes you need to get some things out of your life in order for God to move in your life sometimes God's saying that you get it out Take care of this. Take care of this issue. I'll do the rest. Sometimes God, let me tell you something. You can read it. Sin will hinder a person's prayer life. Unconfessed sin will hinder a person's prayer life. Get it out. Hatred, bitterness, envy, unforgiveness will hinder your prayer life. Hello? Hello? Oh, I'm preaching better than you're shouting tonight. Do I need to jump everything in here? Well, here we go. Who's going to try to catch me? (laughs) Listen, what I'm telling you, these things will hinder your life. They will hinder God's moving in your life. Let me tell you, God has a desire to heal. But if there's unforgiveness, bitterness in your life, hatred, strife, God ain't going to heal until that's took care of. Did you hear me? I'm telling you, these things will hinder. If we want to see a move of God, we got to get back to living by God's standards. We got to get back to living in the fear of God. We got to li- get back to living in the whole, by His word, if you will. Listen, how can you prove this? Well, it's kind of simple what God showed right here. It's kind of simple what God done right here in the Scripture. I want you to think about it. How many know that Jesus cleansed the temple? How many know it had become a den of thieves? 
How many know that it was not accomplishing its true spiritual purpose? And I personally believed he cleansed it on two occasions. Matthew gives an account of it, and I know John gives an account of it. Some scholars believe it was all one, but knowing people, I believe it was two. Because I know how people are. Hey man, I know that human tenders you. But we'll go by, I believe, Matthew's account for just a minute. What had happened right there in the temple where God had desired it to be a house of prayer. But they had turned it into a den of thieves. What would be going on there? It had become a flea market type atmosphere. There was no respect for the true purpose of God. There was no respect for really for God himself. They would try to sell offerings. They would try to sell these things. One would say, I got it for this price. And then the other one would say, I got it for this price. The point I'm trying to make is the house of God was out of order. And as long as it was out of order, it could not be doing what God had intended for the house of God to be. As long as it was a den of thieves, it could not be a house of prayer. Did you hear what I'm telling you? As long as it was out doing, wanting its own purpose and living for its own desires, it could not accomplish that what Jesus had put or had intended for it to be. So let me tell you what went on. Let me tell you what our day is like. We bring, we got a generation today that brings in smoke machines, fog lights, and rock and roll concerts. Hello, did you hear me? We got a, we want, we want to be entertained. We want instead of coming to the, we want to come to the house of God. We want to set into services when the moving of the spirit goes around and just horse around and wonder why God is not a blessing us. Wonder why God is not moving upon us. Wonder why God ain't doing things in our life. Can I tell you tonight when we have a concern to be entertained we lose its true spiritual purpose. When we come to church just to horse around when service is going on can I tell you something tonight? We lose its true spiritual purpose. What are you saying tonight? We wonder why God ain't moving in our lives. We wonder why God ain't moving in the church. It's not until the house of God gets in order, then we will see a move of God. Let me tell you the very moment that Jesus cleansed the temple, they brought the lame in and the sick in, and they began to get healed. Hello? Hello? tonight we want to know why God ain't moving because we've lost reverence we've lost respect for the things of God people don't know the difference between the holy and the unholy anymore amen amen people don't know the difference between righteousness and unrighteousness anymore Sadly, there's many on pews tonight that don't know the difference between light and darkness. Don't really care. They know. That's their attitude. Don't really care. I've come by to tell you tonight. God said, if you want me to move in your life, get your house in order. You want me to, you want to be what I want you to be? Get your house in order. I told them the other night. It has been years ago. I knew some of these preachers. Oh, I knew when they come around, I needed to head out the back door. <laughs> Did you hear me? Hey, man, I'd walk in Walmart and see the preacher. I know to go on the other side. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Did you hear what I'm telling you tonight? Anybody know what I'm talking about right there? Well, you'd see a certain one coming. Let me tell you, you knew to hide away. Let me tell you, these old timers went down there, I give you ladies a hard time. But let me tell you something. When I knew these ladies that were coming after me, I, when I seen them get looking at me, I'd start finding my way an exit door. Because if I knew they got a hold of me, they had something on me. Hey Amen. What are you telling me? You knew when the presence of God resided on someone. What I'm telling you tonight is it's time we get our house, our temples in order. It's time we respect the things 
things of God. It's time we get this. We respect his house right here. It's time we begin to fear God. And let me tell you right now, look at yourself. How many in here is bought with the blood of Jesus Christ tonight? How many in here saved tonight? You need to say, I'm the temple of God. I'm the temple of God. Am I accomplishing that which God wants me to accomplish? Am I doing that which God wants me to be? Or do I need to get something out of my life where I can be the house of prayer? Did you hear me? How many know God wants you to be the house of prayer? If you're the temple tonight, God wants you to be the house of prayer. Well, holy ground. Hello. They ought to know who we are. I'm telling you, it's a sad day when our Pentecostal they don't even know we're Pentecostal no more. Too many churches got Pentecost in the name but ain't had a move of the Spirit in years. Hello? We don't want to be called Holy Rollers no more. Should I or should I not roll this aisle tonight? I'm thinking about it. Show you how it once did. Once did like this. You hear me? We once jumped them. We once moved them. We've lost our identity because we've got a desire to fit in with the darkness of this world instead of the holiness of God. Amen. We want to be like the darkness. My Lord, why do we want to be like the darkness when I can be a light in this world? Amen. We want to, we want to be the house of prayer and not the den of thieves. It's time to get our respect and fear of God back. Amen. Amen. You need to quit walking loosely. You need to quit trying to walk it both ways. How many know you can't walk it both ways? How did you, anybody know how Jesus said the path was? Straight and what? Oh, that was not set. Oh, you can get louder than that. Little louder. Little louder. Little louder. Straight and out. All right, that's good. I exercised your lungs a little bit tonight <laughs> since you wasn't shouting. <laughs> Listen, folks, it boils down to this. It is a shame that we fear man more than we fear God. But I want you to know tonight that we don't come in here to stand before a beer man. It ain't me you got to worry about. Did you hear me? It ain't me that's going to condemn you. It ain't me that's going to do it. I'm just a mere man. I'm just a spokesman. But let me tell you, you ain't standing before just a mere man. You ain't standing before the president. You're standing before the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the God of the universe, a holy and righteous God. We tend to forget that. We tend to forget the holiness of God. See, God then instructed Moses. Here's the second point. In Exodus, God instructed Moses to take his shoes off. What was that a sign of? It was simply a sign of respect. Just like when we come into the house and we take our hats off into the house of the Lord. It's a sign of respect. In fact, Joshua was actually told. The, in fact, let me get back. In the military, I do know this. In the military, they teach you to, when you're outside, to have your hat on. When you're inside, you take your hat off as an act of respect. See, God told Joshua the same thing, to take his shoes off. In Joshua 5 and 15, And the captain of the Lord of hosts said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place thou stand is holy ground. Amen. What he was talking about is where my presence is. We need to have, he is saying, you need to respect it. You need to have reverence 
for the things of God. Can I tell you what Proverbs 9 and 10 tells us? How many in here want wisdom tonight? Anybody in here want wisdom tonight? Well, here's your scripture where it all starts at. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. There's where bit wisdom begins is to fear God. Amen? Reverence God. Respect God. I know it's ain't a shouting message, but I know this is a message God had for this church tonight. What it means is you take God into account as the foundation and the discipline of your life. You live according to His Word. Your life, you walk after God. It means to reject every false God and serve the Lord wholeheartedly. And let me tell you, that word false God I'm talking about, it covers more than just Buddha or Allah. It covers everything that takes you away from God. Amen? Can I tell you what's a crying shame? I, let me tell you, I like football. You know that. But it's a shame when we worship a pigskin more than the true and living God. Amen? 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 They worship that skin. You watch tonight down here in Philadelphia. It will be packed out. Did you hear me? It will probably be standing room. Amen? And then this, I'm not going to just pick it on Philly. I'll pick on every team. Everywhere there was a game, the stadiums looked full. Entertainment. Just like ancient Rome. Here's something to think about real quick. America's got parallels just like ancient Rome did. We worship our idols of entertainment and sports figures. We Listen, I'm going to be a little hard tonight. Not because I'm trying to be mean. Because I'm trying to get to church in line. Because we're too close to the end. We need to quit being dictated by the things of this world. We need to quit worshiping the beds. And we need to get back to worshiping God. Amen? We need to get back, quit worshiping our pleasures and start worshiping God. Amen? Let me tell you, the fear of God is walking in His ways. And it brings means also being obedient to Him. The fear of the Lord is closely linked with morality and with obedience to God's commands. Let me tell you what's missing in this last day. And it starts in the house of God. The reason people ain't obedient to God is because they don't fear God. Amen? Let me give you something. Can I preach for just a few minutes longer? I probably ain't going to holler and scream no more unless it hits me tonight. I may kick my shoe off here in a minute. Amen. But how many know the story of Ananias and Sapphira? How many know they lied to the Holy Ghost and fell over dead? I'm not going into it. But the Bible says after that happened, great fear fell upon them. Amen. That was New Testament. That was in the book of Acts. What's missing tonight? Why our morality is out of control. Can I tell you why morality is upside down? What is right they call wrong. And what is wrong they call right. It's because there's no fear of God. Amen. There's, this is what's missing in our society. It's a fear of God. We've been implanted to be atheistic. Humanistic. What I seen something the other day, these so-called preachers, I'm going to call them so-called because they're not a preacher of God, when you stand outside of an abortion clinic and bless it. They ain't blessing it. They ain't even talking to the Lord God Jehovah because God ain't hearing them. Amen? They're inviting the wrath of God on them. Amen? What is missing today, immorality is upside down, is because there's no fear of God. Hello, it's not in the world, it's in the house of God. Amen? There's no fear, there's no reverence, there's no respect for the things of God. They think God's just playing around. How many know tonight God ain't playing around? Amen? 
God's not playing around. This thing's about wrapped up. Amen? This thing's coming to a halt. Amen? He's going to show the world he ain't playing around. But we lost the reverence. We've lost the fear. And we've lost the respect of God for God. And morality is upside down. Amen? We don't want to live righteously before God. One time, let me tell you, in those old days, they had so much fear of God. And I know this. Listen, they had so much fear of God, some of them old timers wouldn't drink a soda. I'm telling you the truth. Some of them old timers didn't even bring a TV into their house. Amen? Why? That's how much they feared God. Let me tell you something. Now, I'm not saying there's anything drinking sodas. I'm a Mountain Dew man. A Mountain Dew is after my own heart. <laughs> I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having a TV in your house. There is some the channels you could put it on. There could be something wrong with it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hello. But what's happened today is we've lost that fear. And we're walking so loosely that they don't even know what morality is no more. Morality is thrown out the window because there's no fear of God, of the God of Abraham, Isaac, in Jacob. Amen? There's no fear of God. Throw it out. Morality is gone. I'm telling you, I'm going to just say it. I heard, <laughs> I'm going to say it, I heard it one night. We, I heard one politician said, talking about their morals, and I looked at them. <laughs> morals, when you say it's all right to kill innocent children, babies in a womb, Morals, when you say it's all right for two men or two women to marry. Hello, you watch my words. You mark it. I heard Donnie Swaggart say yes. It's going to happen. There's going to be a day people going to want to marry their dogs. Hello, you mark it. It'll cut. There'll be some. I told you this morning, there's a 60-year-old man trying to change his age to 20 legally. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I'm serious. I've seen this on a prophecy. Going to court to try to say he's 20 years old because that's the way he feels. <laughs> you see where we're going. You see how the society is because we've lost the fear of God. And I'm telling you tonight. Saints, we can't expect it in the world if it's not in the church. Did you hear me? You can't expect the world to fear God when the body of Christ who profess to know Him don't fear Him. Amen? Amen? It's got to start here. Sister Marcy, you can get ready to come because I think it's time we get an altar call here in just a moment. I'm telling you tonight, we've got to get back to fearing God tonight. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 10 and 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul. You know, what he, the idea of this passage is men ought to be reverencing and pleasing God than men. But it also tells us something. What man can do to you only affects your body. But what God can do to you not only just affect your body. He'll affect your soul too. Amen? See, listen, we too often we want to please others. We want to fit in with others. And at the time, we are offending God. Think about it. Men are careful to not offend others or upset others. We don't want to make nobody mad. We don't want to make nobody upset. Hello? Hello? 
Let me tell you something. I tell you, you got to call a God on your life. You don't want to make people mad. You need to go sell ice cream. Hey, man. Well, let me tell you, we don't, people's got that. attitude. We don't want to offend others. But they have no problem offending God. Everyone's standing there. Many will walk around their boss man and they'll respect the boss man, respect the job that they're on. But God is treated like baggage. They're up and out of bed for work at 6 o'clock in the morning but can't seem to rise for the house of God. Amen? They'll be deer hunting early in the morning in a couple weeks, but 9.30... It's too early. There's a problem in the body of Christ. Today, it's of reverence. It's a fear of God that's missing. The fear of God of who he is is and his holiness. I asked you tonight, God is saying it's time to regain the fear. I believe it's time to repent of disrespecting God. And it's time to get down and humble ourselves before God. And cry out to God. And turn from those ways. Then he said, I will hear from heaven and will heal their land. How many tonight would step out and say, I need to get back to fearing God. I need to get back to reverencing God. Is there one in here tonight? Is there one that says, I need to get back to fearing God? I've lost the fear. I'm just treating him nonchalant. I'm telling you tonight, God wanted to turn it around. God wants to make you a house of prayer, but you've got to turn from those ways. You've got to get back to pleasing God. Said, I'm going to please you no matter what. I may offend others, but I don't want to offend you, oh God. I don't want to offend you, God. Oh God, forgive us. Oh, God, forgive us tonight. Oh, God, forgive us for not being where we need to be. Lord, we humble ourselves tonight and ask for your forgiveness. For not fearing you, for not respecting you and not honoring you in the way that we need to honor you. God, help us tonight to get back to those old paths. Jesus, tonight we ask for you to touch every life, heart, and individual up here.